Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much for this invitation. And I'm so pleased to see also so many friends listening to me all together. So it's it's very nice, a big pleasure. And you know, just, just before I start, this background is not really I'm trying to rail in my university. It's it's because of my background at the moment, I'm on a temporary accommodation. So my background at the moment is not as fancy as uh, the one of most of you, like the one of Jan. So I prefer to hide it. So this is the reason why I have this uh, big, um, a bit uh, Harry Potterish uh, background here now. Okay. So this is um, yeah. I work with uh, Anwen, who is uh, my colleague at uh, Glasgow uh, University this year. Um, okay. Let me just here. So we 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 all know that uh, COVID had a big impact, a very negative impact on our well-being, essentially on many things. Um, there are now quite a few studies. One of them, mine, uh, which has been published recently, on um, different effect uh, of, of of this COVID period over gender, age, ethnicity, and so on. Okay. But still, uh, very little or no attention has been devoted to the difference in personality, how different people with different personality have reacted to this uh, awful period of our life. Um, and, you know, this is interesting. It's interesting because, uh, apart from the interest per se, it's interesting because I, I discovered, actually, with the help, I have to say, with also with the kind help of Gyan, that there is a huge literature on uh, the link between personality trait and mental health. And I think with this paper, we are aiming to, we are, we can say something about this, uh, this uh, which might be interesting to people in this, uh, working on this uh, literature on personality and mental health. Uh, so I will, I will, will be clearly more specific later. Um, and, you know, this is the idea, trying to understand if different traits lead to different trajectory in mental health. Now, why we do that? I mean, it's, it's maybe interesting. I don't know if it's pointless to say this in an audience like you. We are not doing anything particularly fancy, okay? But I think we are doing something useful. Useful in the sense that we are providing, uh, hopefully, practitioner with the possibility of a, of, a, of a more personalized psychological or psychiatric treatment, okay? People are different and need to be treated different. This is probably the first contribution. Uh, then, as I said, we aim to shed more light in this already big crowded literature in personality and mental health. But what is interesting here is that we really have a natural experiment going on, okay? It's, it's something which is very close to be a natural experiment. We are, we are a period, we're a period of stress uh, where we can observe people, the people, uh, their mental health quite well, thanks to the uh, understanding society data. And also we can measure their personality, their cognitive skills. And we have this data, crucially, for the period of the COVID, but also for the period, pre previous period. So we can really measure the difference. Huh? We can really do a diff in diff analysis. Um, so as I say, the natural experiment, thanks very much to the university understanding society data, uh, which uh, provide uh, uh, the COVID period, uh, seven and now eight wave. I will not use the eighth wave now, but I will use seven wait wave, but I already had a look at the eighth wave where they really, uh, you know, try to, to, to provide a survey for a, a, a sample which they claim uh, is representative of UK population. So it's very important because we are able to monitor the same people representative of UK population for eight, eight months in eight, you know, in eight period during the entire COVID period. And also we have the data on personality trait, trait and cognitive skill uh, for, uh, from the wave, actually the 2013 wave. So it's seven years before. I, I will tell you what are the good things of having data from six, six years before and what is the bad thing, but I will I'll just bear with me. 
So just give you an overview of the result, then we can, obviously I will, I will be more specific, but you know, just to tell you how, what, what we found. Openness is a particularly strong, uh, you know, determinant of mental health deterioration. More open people seem to be the one who pay the highest toll from this uh, period. And what is also interesting is that his magnitude seems to be increasing actually toward the period, huh? while the others are, are a bit either constant or decreasing or the following a bit the, the, the infection, no, openness seems to be increasing, which, which is very puzzling if you want. Uh, eye extraversion is, is clearly, a, uh, eye extravert people are clearly people seem to be affected also. And as you would expect, neuroticism has a negative effect, but it becomes surprisingly insignificant after we control for a number of, of, of variables, which open an interesting puzzle that at the moment we are not able to, to solve, but we have some idea. So this is a quick introduction. I'll present you the data, the result, the discussion, but try to keep things, actually a discussion. I will avoid the discussion because I know there's going to be a discussion uh, later. Okay, so I will try to fit this into the, uh, the time we need. So the data set, we have the seven waves. Uh, so it's April, May, June, July, September, November, January. Now that is March. I already had a look at the March data, but uh, it's not here. It's not in this, in this presentation. Uh, so as a pre-COVID, uh, to have a bench line, we have the when wave nine of the main survey, which is basically the same people. And as I said, personality trait and cognitive skill comes from wave three. Finally, eventually we have a balanced client panel uh, with some attrition. Now we have an attrition of 36%, which is not uncommon in studies like this, but what bothers us more, what worries me more than 36% is this 24%, because the 36% part of it is due to the fact that some people are present in some wave, but not in other, especially because we are using wave three. So we know what is the, what's go, it's, it's, it's mostly exogenous, and we know what is the problem there, I'll tell you soon. For missing data, clearly it's, it's a problem because they are endogenous, 24%, but this is missing data, missing data. In every study involving understanding society, there are missing data, unfortunately, and we have to live with that. But I'll try to, to tell you, to show you that it shouldn't be biasing our result and shouldn't represent a threat neither to the, um, to the identification nor to the, uh, uh, the fact that the, uh, the representativity, okay? It's not a threat to neither representativity or identification. Uh, and we use obviously longitudinal sample uh, weights provided under science society to make everything uh, uh, representative of the UK of the UK population. This is a bit of a attrition, an attrition uh, uh, analysis. I think I don't have much time to, to do that, but I, I, I think I we, you know the economists don't like attrition analysis and I think they should do attrition analysis because we using very often, we, we, we don't deal very well with missing data. Uh, this is our, the initial uh, balance sample, the one we have, the, you know, uh, uh, the study. Here after we, we add the wave three, the one with personality trait and cognitive skills. Here after we add the wave nine, which is our bench line. And this is the one of the, uh, due to the missing value. From this to that, which is about 14, 15%, it's not a big deal uh, because, because it's exogenous, okay? The change is exogenous and we know what's going on. We just, we just have to consider that since we have wave three, we have people who are six years uh, uh, older. So that is not representative of a population starting from 17 years, 17 years, but is representative from a population which is start from 27. That's the only thing we have to consider about this attrition. This other attrition is a bit more, uh, more problematic because it is, it is endogenous. So it's missing data. Why this data is missing? People didn't respond. So this is, this is problematic if you want to be a representative or yeah. 
The only thing I can tell you about that is that uh, it doesn't affect significantly uh, our main variable, nor the main uh, uh, demographic characteristics. Okay, this is I can tell you. So in a sense, it's reassuring. Mental. This is uh, something which I, I really had. I, I was not really never used this GHQ before. I now I'm using it, and I'm actually to say that. I'm very happy I'm using this index. Why am I happy to use this index? Because apart the fact it's been validated in huge literature in different language, but that's not the point. The point I like of this index is the fact that the questions are quite precise. Have you recently been able to concentrate on whatever you are doing? And then you answer mm, better than usual, same as usual, less than usual, much less than usual, okay? So you are able to say whether it's something is changing in your life. It, it's very specific concentration. So I think everybody is able to say with some level of precision that is more or less able to concentrate. And we are using the measure, not we are aggregating the score. No, we are using the other measure, which is called the caseness. So whether the symptom, the bad symptom exists or not, so whether have you been recently able to concentrate? Yes, then it's not a symptom. No, well, it's a symptom of deterioration. Another thing, have you recently felt constrained, constantly under strain? Yes or no, and so on. And we have 12 of this. From zero, basically no deterioration at all, to 12, a lot, a big deal of deterioration. Now, you see, it's... Um, I like this because it's reasonably cardinal. It's reasonably cardinal. For example, if I have two symptoms of deteriorations and Jan has got four symptoms of deterioration, well, Jan has uh, clearly we can compare my mental health with Jan mental health. He is twice as worse. Sorry, I'm on a seminar. Can you please lower the volume? Sorry, guy. Uh, I'm sorry. It's it's my. <laughs> I'm on a temporary accommodation. Mm. Joanna, I'm on a seminar. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, you know. Um, now, you see, this is very interesting, I think, because you can treat this measure as card. I can, you, then you can use oil less. You, you don't have the problems which are very common in the happiness literature of the fact that the measure is not completely cardinal, it's not completely ordinal. And you have, so it's really symptoms, it's measure symptoms, one symptoms, two symptoms, three symptoms, which are more or less, more or less similar uh, among people. And that's why I like, I like to think in terms of mental health. Clearly, it's a different thing than happiness, right? completely different thing, but that's, that's a way to measure which I like a bit more. Now, concerning personality traits, this is uh, as, uh, a very, uh, as we probably all know, this is a very, a very well known uh, um, uh, way of measuring through this uh, questionnaire, which is normally, the nowadays, the, the normal is measured. The, in, I think it's 45 questions. This is what is normally used nowadays. It started to be like 200, 250 questions, now it's 15 questions. Now it was 45. Is, there, is a, there is a reduced version, which is this 15 questions here. And um, it is done for big surveys. People, I mean, it's been validated for big surveys. So although, I mean, clearly more noisy for 15, five questions generate a much more noisy uh, measure of, of personality than 45 question, but it's, uh, it's, it's supposed to be, since you have a big, large number, it's supposed to be, you know, somehow okay for that. Uh, uh, okay, I would like to ask, um, so, yeah. what, 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 what's the scale of answers? It's uh, ah, uh, so it, you say the 
I'm sometimes read to the others, it's it's between one and two and four, I think. It's between one and four. You say very much. It's I see. Know, okay, on. very much. This is the, the way. Uh it's one of yeah, one to four. Um yeah. So this is, for example, for agreeableness. I I am sometimes rude to others, huh? and if I am somebody scoring high on agreeableness, I say never. Okay. And this is agreeableness, conscientiousness, extroversion, neuroticism, and uh, and uh, um, openness, and conscience. Yeah. Another thing I want to say at this stage. You know, for example, here worries, get nervous. They might look a bit similar to this one, so that you might think there might be hankering effect. But here is nice. It's nice the fact that we this question here, sorry, has been have been answered six years before this question. So in a sense, the fact that there's been such a big lag you know, make you somehow, somehow reassure you that there is no anchoring effect going on here, which I think is good. So the fact of using personality trait data from six years before yeah, increase clearly the, the attrition, which is bad, but helps because avoid the anchoring effect of having this question asked. Uh, Uh, then, okay, we will then after, I will not talk, I will go very quickly. We don't do only, we don't use only these things. We also add a series of control, especially the job status control are important because, you know, somebody who is agreeable is less likely losing a job, for example, okay? Now, it's clearly that there might be confounding. It can be, I can have a, a mental health problem because I'm lo I've lost my job, not directly because of the COVID. Okay, so then it's important to, to control for, for example, for job status, but also for everything is there, regional and marital status, also sides, everything is changing, could be changing during, during the COVID because for what is not changing, there is the fixed effect controlling, so it's fine. But whatever, for whatever is changing, well, that's a, it's an interesting, uh, I think it's good, it's good to have such this control. Another thing we are controlling for it's cognitive skill because cognitive skill are linked to personality and it's also us. Uh, we found some interesting, uh, uh, some interesting, some interesting result on cognitive skills, and um, we found this. We 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 get this on um, by by doing principal component with all this uh, uh, with all this single uh, measure of, of, of a cognitive skill that is are always in the same way of understanding society you eugenio can i um, push you to move along swiftly we, um, okay so this i i can tell you that uh, uh, the correlation matrix behave in the way you would expect to behave for a personality trait but uh, traits are positively correlated among each other, a part neurotic is negatively correlated. This is another sanity check, which will, uh, it's correct, it's, it's, I'll tell you another thing. This is sanity check respect to men, the literature on personality and mental health. If somebody of this huge literature on personality and mental health will look at this correlation, he will not be surprised at all. He will say, this data behave correctly. Right? That was very important to have this sanity check. Because you know, personal, we measure personality trait in six, in five, uh, in fifteen questions uh, long ago. You know, it's clearly there is an issue there. No, somebody in this literature will tell you, well, these are all boring results. We all know that they are exactly what we would expect, which is what I wanted to hear. And these are a first overview of the result, which is probably what the main point. But you know, first of all. The deterioration. This is deterioration. Okay, this is change in uh, in the GHQ score. High means big change. A lot of deterioration. Respect of the year before. So as you see, as you can imagine, April was worse. As soon as we got the lockdown, people start to panic. People start to be very stressed. So very high level of deterioration. So then it went down more or less following the infection rates. You remember around uh, already around, around, around 
um, July and uh, uh, in the, you know uh, the vacation, summer vacation, people were starting to go on vacation. They were start to feel much less. You know things were going down, and then started to go up again uh, when the uh, the the infection went up, like in January. I can tell you, I've seen the data, the new data. They are quite going down quite a lot. Okay, so it's it's just good. Now. Let's look now at the, the at effect of personality. Here are the top 15% uh, open people in the sample. And here is the bottom 25%, okay? So if you look at the people who are high in openness, the highest in openness, they feature more deterioration than the one uh, uh, at the bottom, the less open. It's, it's pretty uh, strong throughout the period. Agreeableness. Agreeableness, well, it's, it's, it seems to be uh, uh, the same. It's, it's to be pre pretty obvious to picture. Uh, people have a low level of agreeableness here. Uh, they have more deterioration, more deterioration. I will interpret these results straight so soon, but I just want to, uh, before we would, to familiarize you with this. So this is uh, people blue are non-agreeable, more deterioration than red people are more agreeable, less deterioration. Extraversion, this is the first surprise in my view. I would have expected a more clean uh, figure while it's not. I mean, it's, it's clearly going the right direction you know, and it's significant. You know that people who are high in extroversion suffer more, but they suffer more at the beginning of the period, not afterwards, which, which maybe, maybe this is due to the fact that people have supplied with the uh, social platforms, you know, their, their, their need of, 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 of sociality. Neuroticism goes on the direction we are, we are going, we are thinking clearly people high in neuroticism feature high deterioration, but it's not as big as I suspect. And you will see that will not be that robust. Conscientiousness, it seems mildly at the end. Now I will interpret this. I would have done this at the end, but since we are, we don't have much time, I'll interpret this. Openness to experience. Openness, people are open to experience. People like experience, to make new experience, okay? So it's, it's really, sometimes they call it intelligence because it's, it's very correlated with intelligence also in our data uh, uh, or, or creativity. So people who have this kind of people, have, uh, they need this sort of new experience. Clearly, they felt very much uh, down uh, on, uh, during this period. And interestingly enough, this effect is even stronger for female responders than male responders, which I found very interesting. Agreeableness. Agreeableness is interesting because I wouldn't have said that thing to begin with. Why? On one side, that's to, to be expected. Somebody agreeable is somebody who can manage well the uh, inter social interaction, okay? So our people are know how to interact socially. They don't co uh, confront with the other people. They always try to find compromise. And this makes sense because in an environment which is in a lockdown, you, you are, you are closing your, your household. You always, you know, it's, it's easy to enter into have a conflict. Okay, people are agreeable. They know how to handle this conflict more than people are not agreeable. However, there is another thing that is interesting. Agreeable people are also people supposed to be altruistic, okay? So you would have expected that somebody agreeable is somebody altruistic whenever you watch the TV, seeing all people dying or suffering, would suffer him or herself more. Well, it doesn't look like this is going on too much. Okay, the first effect, which is really handling social social interaction, is stronger than the second effect, altruism, whether it exists or not. Because some people think that this altruism is just is not true, is not real. Extraversion. What is the extraversion in the neuro neuro neuroscience theory of personality? Extraversion is literally the uh, the way you react, the elasticity to reward especially to social reward, but to reward that, well, clearly when you're in an environment where you cannot see your friends uh, too much, you cannot show off, 
and you cannot find that reward from your friends that you really need. That's why you have this effort. And this effort is fading away. Why? That's an interesting point. It might be the effect of the social. So extrovert people, they say, okay, fine. I go on the social. I start to talk on Facebook, to talk more on, on Facebook, on Twitter, to, and, and, then, and then, you know, somehow uh, help me more. On, 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 you know, the fact that I don't see them is not a big deal. So I get used to that. I get used. Also, you know, uh, uh, interestingly, if people are high in extroversion, also people adapt very quickly. Okay, I have a very big sense of uh, feeling of adaptation. That that's that's a, it's a it's a story that is a bit too long to, to say that, but it's also people adapt very quite quickly. Neuroticism. Neuroticism is the trait that you would expect to be very strong. Why? Because neuroticism is in the modern interpretation of, of, of big five theory, is the elasticity, the reaction to threat. Okay, so while uh, extroversion is reaction to the reward, neuroticism is the reaction to your threat. So it's how you react to the stick, while extraversion is how you react to your current. Okay, now you see in an environment which is very threatening around because you don't know what's going on about the economy, the virus in itself, you would expect that people high neuroticism will suffer more. And in fact, you see them suffering more, but not as much as we, we thought. And in fact, it becomes non-significant. Now I'll show you. Conscientiousness, I didn't have very much prior. On one side, somebody who is conscientious is somebody who is very uh, good at solving problems, which may be helpful in a new environment. On the other side, conscientiousness are, are people who are also long-term planner they like to they like and they are very good at long-term planning and in an environment of covid you cannot do very much of this so i would have expect two the two in fact you don't see much there are two effects that could that could uh, kill each other okay cancel each other out now this is the first result you now i Vino, you do have to move towards concluding if, if yeah yeah you know just to tell you okay then i'll move i i'll tell you after we control for everything after we control for everything we will find these are the coefficient okay the coefficient of the interaction between your trait and the period okay so it's a, that what what is different from this and this is the fact that here you are you have a control you have control for fixed effect, you have control for uh, job status, marital status, and so on. Now, you know, you see two, two important things here. First of all, openness, you see, seems to be clearly increasing. Huh? The coefficient of openness seems to be clearly increasing, which, which is very interesting. So people are open, it's, they are suffering more and more about the situation, more so even. Uh, uh, is stable. Um, neuroticism, you see, neuroticism is not significant. After putting those control, neurotic is not significant. Now, just just I'll tell you I'll tell you my interpretation, and then I open the floor to 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 a discussion. I think that there are two possibilities. The first possibility is that neurotic people are used to 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 be stressed in a sense. Already, life is enough to stress them. The COVID is is something which is, you know, fine. They are stressed anyway. So it's, it's not changing too much their life. They are stressed anyway. That's a possibility. The second possibility instead, uh, which, which is, is possible, is that the, the GHQ index is not an index that measure serious mental health problem, but it's an index that it's, it's meant for, for detecting initial mental health problem or very very mild one okay so it's it's it's, it's typical it's well known to be like that it's 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 in, if you want it's between an index of uh, depression and an index uh, happiness question the one we all know it's a bit in between now it's possible that uh, that would be interesting in my view to, to to investigate that for highly neurotic people the ghq index is not a good index if you want to measure the mental health you need something stronger. You need something which is able to, to, to take away because he's got already all the mild symptoms that everybody, somebody highly neurotic has already got all the mild symptoms that normally people get. So you need something stronger. 
Okay, that's my interpretation. Uh, we have also sort of a robustness check, uh, placebo. We also, uh, uh, you know, the sample between female and male. We here where it's interesting this because here, for example, cognitive skill is significant for female, non significant for male. Uh, openness is, 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 is stronger for female than for male. Um, now, uh, this, this, this is uh, something which, which is interesting because it seems that are the female, the one who are more on the openness intellect side uh, affected, okay? So it's, it's all a discussion that can be, can be brought. And this is uh, basically uh, uh, the, yeah, the discussion which I already did, okay? Sorry for if it took me a bit longer than expected.